it's a great pleasure to have Alan Lee with us today um, to present his work on uh, platforms. Alan's been doing quite a lot of work on platforms, so it's, it's really a great pleasure. It's certainly consistent with many things we hear in the digital initiative. Uh, we are trying again to do a uh, hybrid. So there are a few of us here in the room, uh, uh, more of you there on the virtual screen. And uh, the way we uh, are gonna try to do it is like we did last time. So just to remind everyone, if you have a question, it does help to uh, put the you know virtual hand raising function up and, um, and I'll monitor that and try to notify Alan as soon as possible. The chat's okay too. And, um, uh, the one thing we ask is, uh, the sound still requires a little bit of a pause as you speak and as you respond, just so, um, that's typical for virtual. So take it away. It's a great pleasure to have okay, you. Thanks, James, for, for the invitation. Thanks, everybody, for, for joining this seminar. So it's really my, my honor to visit HBS and to show some of the work I'm, I'm working on. So the paper I'm going to present today is about the impact of on-demand delivery. In the, in the restaurant industry. Uh, so that business model has become actually a, a 100 billion uh, business. But the question I've heard again and again from restaurant owner and uh, policy maker is, so do this platform really benefit you know, uh, the restaurant? And if not, what should we do uh, from the policy making perspective? So just to give you a, a very short introduction of the industry. Uh, so this is a survey actually from Morgan Stanley before the pandemic. Over two thirds of Americans already started to, uh, to order for delivery online. And that number is, is going to be only larger during the pandemic. So we look at the industry, the restaurant industry you know, in, in the last thousand years, it, it, it remains mostly the same until recently. People started to, to place an order online and get food delivered uh, to our household. So the, it, it's a $1.2 trillion business. If platform get a small fraction of it, it's gonna be a really big uh, model today. So now we have this, what we call the platform aggregator. So they connect driver, uh, customer, and, and restaurant, and to make this make happen. So the question I'm asking today is about, so do this platform really benefit uh, restaurants? So we have seen actually conflict argument from, from um, both sides. So McDonald's, for example, has reported some of the positive experience working with this platform. And say they say that they offer the restaurant the, the flexible access to capacity. So this is what we call pay as you go uh, basic. And also the platform might offer a new channel to reach potentially new customers. Like, so the best thing is you know, this customer actually are incremental to uh, what the, uh, the, the, uh, the restaurant are already serving. But on the other side, there are an illegal uh, anecdotal evidence suggesting that so this problem might be actually doing more harm than them doing good. And the downside you will look at from here is about so okay, restaurants already have this dying and takeout channel. Uh, they have been using this model for a long time. And now we have a new channel being added to that, that model. Would the new model is actually canalizing restaurant existing uh, direct channel? And also you look at the margin for the restaurant industry. We know that the profit margin by offering is single digit for, for many of the restaurants. So 30% of the commission free restaurant need to pay to the platform. It's gonna quickly eat up all the, all the margin. So it's not clear whether you know, the, the cost of uh, uh, actually always the benefit from working with uh, this platform. So, so there's also another very interesting divide that we have seen in the last two decades. The restaurant industry has seen the rise of uh, chain, like McDonald's, KFC, et cetera. But independent restaurants have been struggling a lot in, in the last decade. In, in particular, during the pandemic, a lot of restaurants closed, and most of these restaurants actually are independent restaurants. So the question I was thinking about actually when I started this stream of research is, I was thinking about maybe this platform might benefit the independent restaurant more. And the argument might come from like cloud computing. We know that in cloud computing, small firm, you know, they might benefit more because they don't have their infrastructure, they don't have the actually the capability to build their own uh, distribute uh, different uh, digital infrastructure. But the result from my research turned out to be actually showing the opposite. Chain restaurant actually benefit for more from working with this uh, platform independent many only marginal. So I'm gonna show you the result uh, in a few minutes. 
So you might be wondering why you do really care about independent restaurant, because it, economy is huge. It's huge. You can think about how many people they hire, and what kind of you know people they hire. So most of the people who work in a, a restaurant might not be able to find another job otherwise, right? And also it matters you know culturally as well. So when people visit for the Boston, so I got two questions. So the first question is, so where where's Harvard? <laughs> so where's Harvard? So when my friend and my family say come to Boston, the first thing they are looking at is well, some of the, you know, some of the things that can they can they can enjoy. Uh, so restaurant certainly is is one of the big things here. Yeah. And I actually don't have the answer to that question. So what's the best restaurant in in Boston? <laughs> I, I have no idea. But <laughs> oh yes, where we're going tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, it's probably something on the north end. I would guess. Yeah, yeah, it could be, it could be, but a lot of variety, a lot of heterogeneity in terms of you know, what kind of food they offer. Yeah, exactly. So, but the answer that I'm, 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 I'm sure I know is so the best restaurant wouldn't be McDonald's. Yeah. So yeah. you have a question? Yeah. So, what, what's the? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to take a question? Oh yeah, same. Yeah. Yeah. Rajiv, yeah, go ahead. Oh, you're muted. Rajiv, you're muted. Uh, is the is the commission uh, the same for independent restaurants as well as the chain restaurants? Uh, so probably I, I couldn't hear you clearly. Can you? The thirty percent, the thirty percent commission. Oh uh, yeah, so that's a good question. I is it the same for chain restaurants as it is for independent restaurants? Because chain restaurants will be negotiating for a large number of restaurants in the chain. So exactly. So that's uh, I'm going to talk about that in one minute. But you're right. So chain restaurant. Get the chance to renegotiate. You could be a lower rate and have a better service as well. But independent restaurant, they don't have that chance. Very often, the platform which offer what you call the either you take it or leave it kind of contract. So I'll be talking about that in a minute. And do we know what that number looks like for chain restaurant? Uh... Yeah, I, I do have some some data on that, uh, but it's not for every every single chance. Okay. So we have to make a total of our numbers. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So the question I'm going to address today is about first is a empirical question about actually whether restaurant benefit from this platform or not, whether it depends on the type of restaurant we are talking about, and also whether it depends on which channel we are referring to. So for example, restaurant might be operating the takeout channel and the dining channel. Would the platform have differential impact on on the two channel? And the second question is about some of the you know, policy questions we're really interested in at this moment. We have seen city trying to come up with all kinds of policy, try to help independent restaurants uh, navigate through the pandemic. So I'm going to talk about some of the you know, policy questions in this case. And the second question is actually was the question I first asked when I started this research. But I feel that it's really difficult to actually answer the policy question. So I decided to do the first question first, which is figure out what are the fundamental in the industry actually before the pandemic and figure out what should we do uh, if we impose regulation? Okay. So the second question actually is happening everywhere. If we look at the broader economy, so we have this kind of, kind of multiple sided platform that serve as an intermediate between supplier and, and, and buyer. So they have reduced which, uh, the search cost and to facilitate the transaction. If you look at some of the example, let's say for example, you think about iOS, like it's a great place for App developer to actually reach a, a large number of users in this case. But if you look at all the examples, the platform owner is huge. It has strong uh, bargaining power over the third party uh, seller in this case. They can trust the price. They basically set all the rules, and uh, uh, the third party participant will have to either say yes or no in this case. So, some of the example here would be like, for example, Amazon has been actually schools for their policy to to force the party seller to sign an agreement saying that you cannot sell the product in other channel at a lower price, including the, the you know, the sales on, on direct channel. And the question we're gonna focus on more is about the platform fee for the, you know, deliver platform. So they are, so uh, platform might have to pay 30% of the fee. So, but why 30%, right? 30% seem to be become a norm in the industry, which kind of really, really interesting. Yeah, so let me show you uh, the power structure. Uh, yeah. Sorry, you seem to be focusing on that 30% commission fee, but I feel like there's a lot of other fees. 
Mm -hmm. So they are, yeah, exactly. There will be delivery fee and service fee, a small order fee, et cetera. Uh, in this case, will be. So shouldn't we think about price at the same company in all of this? Uh, so we, which price? The, the price, the revenues that the platforms make. So the, 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 uh, so the revenue, the price the revenue make. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so in the restaurant industry, so the commission will be covering the sales, just the, the, the order amount for that, for that, for the sales, yes, not including uh, the, yeah, yeah. Back to the question that you had in the previous slide, you know, are, are these fees too high, too low? Um, I guess the 30% commission fee taken in isolation maybe only a partial view of mm -hmm. what prices these platforms actually charge. Yeah, so that's, that's a good question. So the platform certainly is charging more, right? Yeah. And the 30% is a, a cut of the, uh, the, the, the revenue that go to the restaurant directly. So customer, like consumer, they might be paying more, but that's a, a separate part. It's, it's not including uh, in, 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 in the restaurant revenue. So you look at the industry, we have like two types of restaurants. We have major restaurant chains uh, and they are certainly bigger. They have moderate you know, bargaining power over the, the platform. They can negotiate in the individual rate. They can have agreement on what kind of service level and what kind of advertising effort the platform needs to provide. Uh, so you are right. So we have actually individual deal for, for the uh, chain restaurant part. But for the small independent restaurant, the, the majority of uh, restaurants on the platform, so basically they have zero bargaining power, no power at all. So the platform will come up with a universal policy for every for every independent restaurant in the case. So thirty percent fee is certainly really hard for independent restaurant, and it's it's, it's the, the policy maker have been thinking about what should we do in the case. And during the pandemic, uh, so a lot of city about 20% actually come up with that regulation to reduce the fee from 30% to 50% or even lower in this case. Okay, to address this question, actually it's not really that straightforward. You were looking to, you know, the dynamic in the, in the marketplace. So we have, we have platform, this is our deliver platform. So on the platform, we have a larger number of other uh, restaurants on the platform as well. So suddenly there's a conflict of entry between platform owner because of the condition, how we actually allocate the value are created from, from the process and competition between different kinds of restaurant models. To answer the policy question, we have to think about what would be the response from uh, the platform or from other uh, restaurants so that we can figure out what are the uh, equilibrium. And then we can go back and analyze the, uh, the effect on individual restaurant. But even for each individual restaurant, we look at uh, the, the type of channel they are offering. So we, we, we have the platform delivery channel and we have the direct channel including dine and sell takeout. So we have to figure out what are the interaction among this channel so that we can, we can, we can analyze the net impact in this case. So I actually have done a lot of work in this domain, like in the platform context, think about what are the competition and the activity among uh, the, the platform, the, the conflict entry between platform owner and, and, and the supplier comfort entry between uh, uh, restaurant, et cetera. And also some of my work has focusing on analyzing the interaction among uh, the direct channel and the indirect channel in this case. But I still feel a little hard to come up with a conclusion whether the policy that city are implementing are really uh, actually beneficial or not. So I, I, I step a little bit. So I look at the first question, let's forget about regulation and focusing on smaller question so that we can get a very good understanding about what is happening in the industry. And then we can get back to, to kind of answer the policy question. So I'm gonna focus on now is about this part. So we can focus on for each individual restaurant. So what are the interaction among these different channel? And then we're gonna bring the knowledge back to answer. So the broader, so the platform, platform question. Can I ask okay. a, a good question? Yeah. Uh, uh, the so you, you, you show this as a two-sided uh, network, uh, uh, sorry, network. And, and I think if I think about uh, the operations uh, bit a little bit more, uh, I, you can think about this as uh, three sides uh, because you also have the delivery uh, mm -hmm. exactly. or riders or, or 
and, and uh, I, I think, uh, like especially like if you are going to analyze some of the policy implications, I think it might be important to also consider that uh, uh, that other side because uh, you're gonna have uh, like uh, different efficiencies if the platform is larger. So if you, you're trying to do like this uh, regulation bit, mm -hmm. uh, I think that part might be an important one to. Focus. Yeah. So that that's actually a great point. Yeah, right. So driver certainly is an important component in here because we involve in the delivery of you know the in the food actually to the also. So that I, I I didn't focus on that for, for two reasons. So one reason is driver is actually more passive in the ecosystem, right? So they will actually uh it's it not like uh, the platform or a consumer or, or restaurant, they are activating playing a lot of role in this, making a lot of decisions in the process. So driver is more passive, right? So the platform have control of this uh, uh, driver. When they get yeah, an uh, order, they're gonna uh, transmit the order to a driver in, in that process. And so that, that's one thing. It's, I think driver is you know, it's, it's making some of the passive decisions. They might be making decisions, but it's more passive decision rather than that, you know, proactive decision in this case. And the second, challenging i think to 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 kind of study driver is we don't really have good data about driver so the data part is it, it, it's sort of missing uh, in part but i think it's really interesting to look at the driver from operation perspective you have another question yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. my question is uh you know during COVID times i mean dine-in is not really an option so if this data is coming from the last year or so, then 30% uh, extraction of commissions is related to the fact that the, that the restaurants are really don't have an option but to use the platforms to do takeouts. Yeah, so, so, th so that's a good question. So our data cover actually a long period before the pandemic and during the pandemic. And 30% commission fee start very early actually when this the business first started it was 30 percent and, and, and we met at that that level and, and so that, that and the fees did not change during COVID times or did some fees so, change during for independent restaurants so they might have some temporary reduction uh to a lower level you know because the platform want to you know attract a larger number of restaurants to join that and another reason is uh some of the restaurants they actually they kind of perceive so there might be regulation from the government. They actually self-regulate. So they reduce the, the fee a lot of it uh, during the, the pandemic. But before the pandemic, it was 30%. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. So now let's look into the fundamental. We said that we're going to forget about the regulation for a minute and then look into the other question about what's it say. So what happened in part? So we're going to focus in on two separate periods. So one is before the pandemic. So we are hoping that that's the equivalent we'll be, you know, converging to in the future. And then, so we can see what happened during the disruption period. So a lot of research on happy to look into like the multi China, a multi China interaction. So a lot of literature looking at what, what's, what's the impact on the internet, uh, e-commerce, how that affect the competition and on-demand delivery platform is also an online marketplace. We expect that a search cost and competition is still gonna play a role in this case. And let the rules show that if there's no differentiation among the sellers, so the price cannot be reduced to uh, to a, a lower level in this case. But, so we cannot build on that as well. And so the mainstream relation we can focusing on is about the substitution interaction among uh, different channels in this case. And we've seen quite different results you look at the literature. So some of the paper find that some substitution some other people find some complementary uh, effect, and some other people find no effect. The context uh, specific. If we look at the restaurant delivery, it's a very interesting kind of, if you think about the kind of product they are selling. They're not selling like physical product, not like the like, like book. Uh, we are actually selling food and, and, and also experience in this case. And also the production model, you look at the restaurant industry is for real time production, for example. So when uh, I'm hungry, you're gonna go to the user app and place an order. So we're not actually placing an order one day or two days before, which is really different from the Amazon model so that we get an order and then we deliver uh, to the customer in a, a given uh, model in this case. 
So competition is very really different in terms of, you know, we, we still expect that the, uh, the, the platform can review uh, it can increase competition, but only only locally, only locally. So that's very helpful actually give us to a way to define a local market and leverage some of the variation in, in different markets to kind of identify some of the results we're gonna talk about. Yeah, so the last thing is, it's related to this uh, commission fate. So here we have different channels. The different channels have very different value implication for, for the restaurants. If we are subjecting the 30% uh, commission fee. All right, so let me give you a, a, a quick overview of the result before I, I lose you. <laughs> okay, so we find substantially has energy effect uh, in, in two aspects. So before the pandemic and, and after the pandemic, uh, during the pandemic, you see the benefit in the pandemic field is much larger, which is kind of consistent with what we were uh, 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 suspecting because you know restaurants might not have the dining option available. They have to rely on uh, delivery. But beyond that, we see actually the problem is actually widen the divide between chain restaurant and independent restaurant. So that's not a cloud computing case. Actually, it's kind of the obvious. So the benefit of joining the platform is actually kind of larger for, for chain than the independent. And we see some different across different channels as well. For chain restaurants, the main benefit actually comes from more takeout visit. And for independent, the primary benefit of joining the platform actually is from spill over to die in. Independent restaurants get more die in visit after they join this platform. So the problem is serving a one way to reach new customer who otherwise wouldn't be actually dying in, in, uh, in, in the store. So we try to figure out what are the underlying mechanisms going on. So we sort of find some evidence that after joining the platform, so the customer become more price sensitive, they get a chance to compare different options because we reduce uh, geographic friction. And restroom differentiation is also dramatically reduced. If you think about your experience, the reason you go to dining in our independent restaurant might be that you actually like the people there, you like the dining environment. But for delivery, we don't have this option. We don't have this feature. So the so dimension to differentiate from other restaurants actually got dramatically reduced. You have to focus on food, the quality of food you are able to offer, and uh, also the price. So this is how you know deliver platform is changing the competition dynamic in that, in that place. So the good thing of this platform is that they can keep restaurants open and maintain actually a higher staffing level. Uh, even before the pandemic, we see that chain restaurants actually increase their staffing level after they partner with uh, this platform. Yes, Shane. You have a question from Anna. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I, I have a question about, I mean, it's not so much for the pandemic, but pre-pandemic and therefore what will happen for post-pandemic. Do you see any difference in um, uh, in the effect or the benefit of uh, using the platform uh, at the different days of the week or different times of the day? So I'm thinking because the, the restaurants have the option of turning off the, uh, the, the uh, ordering uh, at, at any time, turning on and off. And, mm -hmm. and I remember pre-pandemic, our local restaurant, when they were very busy for lunchtime during the uh, pre-pandemic in the restaurant, they would turn off the option of ordering before 1 p.m because they couldn't manage the, 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 the traffic and uh, the delay, there would be delays in delivery. So, uh, so I imagine that the benefits of those uh, benefits of the platform may be different for different days of the week and different times of the day. And do you see that, yeah. that effect? Yeah, so that, that, that's a great question. Uh, for this paper, I didn't look at the variation across state. Uh, so yeah, so I was, Starting another uh, a project that was trying to look in, look in that part. But for the, the variation, I, I expect it to be there, it should be there, but it's not going to be very significant for, for two reasons. If you think about the, 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 the lunch time and dinner time, they tend to be very concentrated during that period. Right? It's not like we can buy something and then reserve it for, for, for a different time. And so that's something that actually the delivery platform was trying to really did to, to work it out. It, uh, they sometimes they try to offer, you know, free delivery. 
you know, outside the rush hour. So this is, you know, how restaurants actually are really happy about because, so this certainly is an incremental of demand. But for most of us, if we are hungry, we want to place an order and want to get the, the, the food to us, you know, very soon within 30 minutes something. So the platform can certainly do something like that. But I haven't seen a dramatic shift in the, how the demand is spread across different hour of the day. But this is something that I can, I can certainly look into. So yeah, we have seen some demand expansion, you know, especially, you know, the spill over to the dying for intermediate restaurant, which is really, really nice. Uh, we see some unequal, uh, unequal distribution of the demand to different type of restaurant. So I'm gonna look into that uh, in one minute. The implication is it kind of unclear. Uh, I'll, I'll go into that later. Yeah. So here, let me give you some, some idea about the, the data. Uh, so we're going to focus on the regular days, which is in 2019. So that we get to know, you know, in a normal day, how the platform works. And, and then we look, look into the pandemic period to get to know how the platform is playing a role in during that disruption. Uh, so for this particular paper, I'm focusing on the Chicago area. And the reason for choosing that is because uh, in other states like California or New York City, so there were regulation going on. So the market is not really that stable. Uh, so the Chicago area is a very, very uh, nice setup for this case. And also a very diverse setup. You, know, you probably know a lot about that, that area. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's flat. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's flat. It's flat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Geography. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, geography is it's flat. Yeah. And it's really nice because the data I'm using to actually capture demand is actually from GPS tracking data. So when you bring your smartphone to uh, to a different location, your device actually sending out you know, location data and, and that data is captured by a manual application you're using and also captured by us, by the service provider. I, I don't want to look at New York City because New York City, you know, is really, really compact. Yeah. yeah just to be clear, so 17 counties. So you, you're looking at both the highest density, which is downtown and Really, rather low densities mm -hmm. outside. Yeah, yeah, um, uh, outside yeah. major cities. I mean, it, it's it, it's a you know an hour outside of Chicago. It's, mm -hmm. it's basically farmland. So, yeah, yeah. So yeah. You, right, you're looking at both extremes. Yeah, it's it's a both extreme. It could be both yeah, yeah. So it's cover a very diverse area. So that give us an idea about uh, what they have and for different based on the geographic as well. As, yeah, and, yeah and, again, income level also really you are seeing. Mm -hmm. Extremes and this mm -hmm. it, it, at the zip code level, yeah, the yeah, because yeah. so you're going to go into Indiana as well, then yeah, it cover Indiana and also part of the Wisconsin, right? yeah, so you're going to see extreme income mm -hmm. differences also, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, so we have the data from the platform, the three major platforms, so then we get to know the partnership, like when a restaurant join each of the platform, so we get a timestamp for that, so we get to know so before and, and after. So as you mentioned, the, the main data that we have is from actually uh, the, the traffic data. So we have data from about 35 million device. Uh, it's kind of a very good representative of the US population. So we are able to actually put this visit into different categories, which is really nice. So for example, we have visit that stay for 20 minutes, so less than 20 minutes. This is what we said is very often is take out visit. And we have a longer visit that respond to, to die in. And with some other data that I, I didn't use this in this setting, it's actually we have the staffing data. Right? So for example, if we know that a device stay in a place for, for more than six hours or so, we classify that as you know, stop, stop. And we have data from Yelp to kind of get a richer set of you know, feature about each of the uh, restaurant in Yeah, yeah. And I also have the actually have the financial transaction data I didn't list it here. I use this to to kind of quantify eventually the revenue implication. Yeah. But that's a really nice way of looking at demand. My question is around, you know, how can so the single person coming to get takeout can be taking out four or five people within a household, so one order, or even it can be a drop a grab up drive driver that comes and picks up like three different uh, orders. Mm -hmm. How do you sort of control for the sort of 
I guess the different sizes of orders mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that each ping represents. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good point. That's why eventually I could also use transaction data. So they will get okay. to know the, the dollar amount. But uh, you actually raise a very interesting question about whether is it possible for a, a data driver to deliver multiple orders at the same time? Yes. So, so it turned out to be really hard. So that actually surprised me before I talked to data and, and Uber you say that it's really hard to do that. Only about five to 10% of the time they will be able to do that. And the reason is actually kind of tied to the characteristic of the you know, restaurant industry. Restaurants tend to be located in different area. And we have a lot of restaurant differentiate of different kinds of restaurants. So this is very different from the Amazon model. So that Amazon is serving you know, a large number of households in their neighborhood. So they can pull the order and then deliver the uh, food to a household in a given window. But restaurant is really hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So in some sense, it, it's avoiding um, the domino model, right? Where they've been vertically integrated into their own delivery mm -hmm. uh, and they do carry more than one at, at a time. Mm -hmm. uh, and the pizza, in particular, I, I yeah. you know, used to run one of these uh, <laughs> when I was in college. So you do have more than one. Mm -hmm. Every made at the time. Yeah, so still do today. Uh, yeah, we have to come up with some incentive to actually to incentive our customer to do it in that way. Because otherwise, for example, if I'm hungry, I'm gonna play the order and they wanna get yeah, the food yeah. right away. We have to provide incentive yeah. to actually encourage people to order and then get delivered at that very specific window. Yeah, but I see. In, in a particular case, it's not really. So, it's so not really. Does uh, that imply? I mean, the deeper issue mm -hmm. is does that imply DoorDash and GrubHub and Uber Eats? Mm -hmm do not benefit from the economies of density that they, because they are not carrying multiple, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, you know, there is the economies of density. If you get enough demand in mm -hmm. one local place, you can then mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, get scope across multiple deliveries at mm -hmm. once. And you're, and I guess the assertion is that you're not, you're not observing much of that here. Yeah. So in the data, we don't do that. Actually, I have a, a friend who worked at DoorDash. Actually, I actually chat with him. You know, separate secretly, <laughs> but that's a secret formula. So it's, they, they were trying to do that because it has a huge implication in the cost, right? right. They talk about right. economy of scale, but that's something, you know, all these platforms have been struggling uh, in this case. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Interesting, really interesting uh, model. Yeah. 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 I, I would like to, to react to Machine's point. I, I think that's where like the, the rider side uh, comes into play. So that if you have a platform that's massive, I think then we start having some of the benefits uh, of uh, being able to aggregate a little bit, uh, a little bit more. So and that's why I think, like going to the policy part, I think that part would be really important to, to look at. But, but I had a different uh, uh, point mm -hmm. that uh, connects a little bit to what uh, Chiara was uh, was saying. So when you when you have this platform partnership here, I'm curious about that uh, that period in particular because I know that especially at the beginning of. Uh, uh, like before the pandemic, a lot of these companies were not establishing always like a formal partnership. Mm -hmm. So you could just order something from uh, DoorDash. I, I don't know about DoorDash specifically, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. some of these platforms, they would just like uh, scrape the menu of the restaurant and they would offer this uh, to you. Mm -hmm. But there was not like a formal partnership. Uh, so yeah. it could be like a, somebody who's showing up uh, there is really from a platform, but the restaurant doesn't even know that that's uh, a platform. So I'm wondering, like, the data that you have here, mm -hmm. is it like really formal uh, partnerships or is there an attribute uh, that they keep that indicates uh, that? So uh, I understand that your data comes more like from the restaurants, not mm -hmm. from the platforms. Mm -hmm. uh, is yeah. that uh, correct? Yeah, so we, we do have data from uh, about whether a restaurant is a formal partner or it's, it's, it's being added to the platform, even without the restaurant's permission. So there was actually a big thing that the regulation in California uh, in, in, in 2020 and go effective in, in January the 1st, 2021. So in the last quarter of 2019, Grab has over uh, 150 restaurants to that problem without a, a restaurant permission. And we have actually have data to, to tell whether it's a formal partnership or it's a non-contract. So from, from the, uh, from the Grab Hub's terminology, they said it is non-contract. So your data comes so from here come from formal partnerships. So, so your data is coming from the platforms uh, yeah. themselves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. 
All right, so let me give you some overview of some of the statistics. We see that, you know, so there actually is the number actually quite surprising. We see that by the end of 2019, about roughly about half of the restaurants actually have shorter partnership with, uh, with, with the platform. And you look at the distribution of the, the price for two types of restaurants, like independent and chain restaurants. So independent restaurants tend to be more expensive. So I think it's more expensive. Uh, you look at the distribution in this case. Uh, if you look at uh, the, you know, the dynamic over time, this is why the, 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 the platform penetration. So certainly more and more restaurants are joining the platform. And we see a, a, a jump during the pandemic. That, 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 that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Where do you get the universal restaurants from? Mm -hmm. uh, so the universal restaurant come from two sources. So one is from the, you know, the, the GPS tracking company we are working with. So they track almost all uh, uh, place of interest in this country. Yeah. And I got another uh, uh, complimentary resource from Yelp and also from some of the uh, restaurant, you know, Yellow Page. So eventually gonna have the universal of restaurants. Yeah. Is Yelp done some work on it? Yeah. It's a very small percentage of restaurants. Yeah, so Yelp is not, not complete. Still surprising. Yes, yeah. so. not complete. Ooh. Cool. Yeah. Even yeah. New York. Yeah, not complete. So we have the GPS data from a company. So if I remember correctly, there are about 900,000 restaurants uh, in this country. And six, about 600 of them on, on Yelp. Yeah, six, 600 of them. So the way I, I, I do it is I got a phone number. You get a phone number, you can actually retract all the information from Yelp using that phone number. All right, so here's the empirical model. It's um, sort of a, a, a different in different model uh, in this case. So if a restaurant sell as a different variable and we have a, you know, a variable about, so the timing of a joint a platform and we have a lot of control about the local uh, characteristic of that, that market. We define a market by uh, joining a, a circle uh, with certain uh, radius in this case. Uh, so we have visit data, uh, and also the very rare one. So you might be arguing that, so join the problem is endogenous. It's a cell, cell selection issue going on here. So what you're trying to do is uh, to use multiple approaches because no approach is perfect. The first one is to kind of construct some comparable uh, treatment and control group using the data from Yelp. Uh, so, for them, uh, so what kind of uh, cuisine they're offering when they are joining uh, Yelp, et cetera. So the second way we're leveraging of shock is kind of related to Tony's comment. So in late 2019, uh, this platform started using a very aggressive strategy to grow their model. So by adding almost the universe of restaurants to their, uh, to their platform. And then there's a regulation from California in early 2001 that actually Limit their, their, their policy. So, the restaurant has to delete, a uh, platform has to delete this program, uh, this restaurant from their platform. So, we sort of trying to use some uh, instrumental variable as well. Uh, and the idea here is about um, constructing a variable that correlates with uh, a focal restaurant decision to join the platform, but not correlate with the outcome variable we are interested in. So, the theory of you know, product adoption is kind of suggests that. The restaurant owner decision might be affected by other people in their area. Uh, so here we can draw a circle. This is uh, uh, other restaurants who are already on the platform at that given time, and then try to figure out what how many of them are on the platform. So in that local market. So, but you might be arguing that so there might be external shock in that within that market. So we didn't focus. We, we didn't uh, have data about some of the unobservable in the area. So what I was doing it, I try to across restaurant that we think might be competing with the focal restaurant in that local market. So in this way, we are able to control for or, or, or eliminate some of the confounder from you know evolving local categories that might expand the result. Yeah. Could can you use the difference between the independents and the uh, franchises with broader geographic scope? Mm -hmm. uh, in this as well, because the ones with wider scope face 
uh, make decisions and, and the China at, level. At, the, at, yeah, at the broader level, mm -hmm. and therefore are yeah, you know, their decision may be influenced by what happens in Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> and it shows up in Chicago yeah. or, or so you that, know, this, that's a great point. Yeah, so that's something I, I can do. So yeah, thanks. All right, so let me show you the, the number. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, restaurant, especially Chinese restaurant benefit a lot from joining the platform. So we see about 9.5% about of increase in takeout visit for, for Chinese restaurant. But independent restaurant only saw about 2.5% increase in takeout. But for the dining visit, this is why you call the spillover effect to dining, we actually see uh, comparable to negative of increase in dining visit after the restaurant joined the, the platform. So this is something really nice for independent restaurants. Oh, yeah. So I, I would want to see, since the event happens sort of in like a spontaneous fashion, mm. what I would want to see is sort of event plan plots, mm. where you clearly see a discontinuity around the event, as opposed to sort of just an overall increase in the mm -hmm. propensity to yeah. get yeah. takeouts. Yeah. So yeah, again, that's a really uh, a good question. So I I wasn't trying to restrict the before and after to be a short window. And the reason could be that, so when a restaurant join a, a platform, they have to do a lot of preparation, they have to do a trial and error. So we don't know exactly when the effect can pay, pay out. Or, yeah. So, sorry, you don't so, know exactly when what? Yeah. So I, what well, you're suggesting that maybe I should do focus on a short period so they will see a, a discrete yeah. jump of maybe increase in, in visit. Yeah. But in this case, it's a little bit hard. It's not like a platform has a clear policy that's gonna immediately affect every restaurant in, on the platform. So you can think about a it scenario. Variable, zero, one, yeah. Depending on whether you're on the platform. Yeah. Or not. So, so basically you're assuming <laughs> that there's that clear discontinuity. Yeah. It's, we're probably not going to see a big continuity in a short window. And the reason it is mentioned that the learning process for restaurant or for consumer to actually figure out that, so this is a play that we can order. PR's point is easy to test. Just yeah. Take yeah. A, just yeah, we can test that. Yeah, we can test it at a time since, uh, yeah. since and then just put it in yeah. time effect and see if it's non-zero or not. Yeah, but actually I can kind of sort of actually adjust your question so we also did some analysis like during the pandemic, right? So we have a national lockdown in that week, which is uh, March uh, 20, around March 20. And then we compare restaurants who are on the platform and not in the platform. So, the, so there we see to see a big, big, a big difference the week before and the, the week after. So that might sort of like answer your question whether we see a discrete, discrete. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, and then the pandemic theories. Uh, so this is some, some of the different results. We see that both type of restaurants get more order, uh, get more take up visit. And what's really interesting is that the Chinese restaurant got almost 21% increase in take up visit if they are on the platform compared to if they were not on the platform. Wow. Yes. So independent restaurants also see a, a big effect. Yeah. So, so we can look into what are the driver it could be you know, driven by supply and, and demand. Um, customers certainly are paying uh, more order for, for takeout, uh, for delivery, uh, but not dying. So we don't see any effect for spillover to dying, which kind of expected. Yes. What happens if you remove like anything that lasts only a minute? Because my fear is that mm -hmm. you like some of these restaurants are in sort of shopping malls or like in places where mm -hmm. there's just more food traffic. Mm -hmm. And so by considering the pains, the phone pains that mm -hmm. are just one minute, mm -hmm. you may actually be capturing people that are walking by, mm -hmm. uh, but that are not staying in the restaurant mm -hmm. or not picking up some food from the restaurant. So yeah, so that could be uh, the case. So so here we have a fake effect model in that, right? So if there's some you know pattern that kind of consistent before and after, we we'll adjust that as well. All right. So we we do some revenue analysis to adjust some of the limitation of using the GPS data as you mentioned. It could be that so the order amount might be different for for for, for delivery model, uh, delivery order and people who go take out. 
and we do some analysis. So here's the, the, the uh, result. For direct takeout, so this is actually customer place an order through the restaurant directly. We see that for independent restaurant, we see a 2.3% decrease in sale takeout. But the benefit to the trend actually is quite significant, 6% overall. So this is the, the direct takeout. So the net total takeout, this is what we do. We actually subtract the uh, commission fee from um, the revenue. And we see independent restaurant can be a little bit uh, from joining the platform in terms of generating revenue from the takeout model. And the net total sale here is basically the, the profit, the profit for independent restaurant is about 3.5%. So that's the net revenue in this case. So after we add the spillover to to dining business. And I'm assuming the only solutions are specific Yeah. Yeah. Okay, even yeah. the one percent. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You want the one percent? What is direct takeout again? Is that like a non-platform or is it, is it like takeout of customers who don't uh, place orders to the platform? Like the direct takeout. Uh, yeah. So for takeout, there might be two type of customers. Those either to go and and take out and sell or you know delivery delivery. So those both are combined. In that, yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is the combined in my one. So this is the customer actually placed an order to actually show the restaurant. So, okay, so the first, uh, the direct takeout are like uh, customers, it's, but not the app is not the, the platform is not exactly. Good. This is a customer go and, and check out and sell, and I also place an order to the restaurant. And, and why do you think uh, you might see that uh, increase uh, for the change there? That's a little bit uh, mm -hmm. classic. Yeah, so this could be a spillover as well. Right? It's about awareness effect. So when you get uh, to aware of the uh, the, the restaurant, so sometimes we might actually go order using the, the McDonald's app, for example, because you don't want to go or visit that store. So how do you identify the direct account? Oh, so we have the transaction data. So the transaction data have information about whether the sale actually goes through the platform or goes through the restaurant. So you transaction data from who? From, from Visa. Yeah, so Visa, you have the, oh, you have the credit card data. Apps. Yeah, you have the credit card data that capture transaction. Either place would, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so, uh, yeah I, you know, this is Chicago we're talking about, so <laughs> okay. I can't resist. <laughs> Remind uh, you a lot of them. Yeah, uh, uh, boy, there's just such enormous geographic variance. And so it really makes me wonder what the chain and independent mm -hmm. is telling me. Mm -hmm. Uh, about sort of the more, uh, you know, so it's a segregated city, uh, 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 you know, extremely segregated mm -hmm. city. So mm -hmm. you you worry first of all that this is standing in for some of that segregation, mm -hmm. geographic segregation, and then the second thing you worry about is in some sense the the, the non-urban areas mm -hmm. around Chicago, again, independent and chain means something very different mm -hmm. than what it means inside the business exactly district. and so yeah. I, I i kind of have a hard time i'd really love to see what i guess sort of like mm -hmm. sees this sort of the geographic spread of this mm -hmm. uh like business just mm -hmm. I'll, I'll say the most extreme ones business district downtown mm -hmm. uh uh african-american areas where mm -hmm. it's it's over 90 percent african-american mm -hmm. uh, uh, low density, where it's you know over eighty to ninety percent, mm -hmm. what we would call rural, mm -hmm. uh, and and so those extreme situations would yeah. help illuminate this. The yeah. So so what we did is we we added some you know, control of the you know geographic one, the, the income level, the density. Yeah, I, I realized if it's some that sort of cool out like, some of this. Yeah. So you are suggesting maybe there are some heterogeneity effect regarding yeah. the, some of these the, the demographics. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I recognize that wasn't your first order uh, yeah. interest. Don't get me wrong, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. You are right. So we, we, I can certainly do something like but that. But you could yeah. still do more. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're trying to figure out the the mechanism. We find as a prize actually is something really interesting. It was that so the delivery channel is sort of change the competition dynamic. Customers get more price sensitive, so they tend to choose actually. Uh, the chain restaurant rather than the independent one in this case. This is why you call it. So for example, for takeout visit, if the increased price from you know 
So the, the one dollar, which is here, you are less than ten dollars. So this is the you know classification from the Yelp data. If you increase from uh, the first category to the second category, you're gonna reduce the benefit of being on the platform by about forty percent in this case. Yeah, forty percent. And this is very interesting if we think about the unique characteristic of the restaurant industry. So people want to go to a different restaurant, but often it's about the dining environment as well. Something that are absent actually when we use the, the delivery model in this case. All right. Um, so, so we see some effect from how the platform is actually trying to redistribute demand, actually the attract from the other uh, category. So the pandemic is very interesting in, in, in answering that question. So during the pandemic, a number of restaurants closed. So we see that more of the customer go switch to the platform to order food. And the platform attract the demand and then distribute them, redistribute them to different type of restaurants. And here we see that 10% in nearby closure in a local market gonna increase the platform sell by about 4.6%. And that's certainly on un un unequal distribution. Uh, chain restaurants get more of the, the pie from it. All right. So yeah, I got five more minutes. Yeah. Uh, I try to actually talk a little bit about uh, something. Yeah. So we have kind of talked about the result. I can skip this slide. Uh, so now I'm going to give you an overview of actually what happened if government tried to come up with a policy to actually regulate the commission fee. So as I mentioned, thirty percent of you know commission fee is is really hard for independent restaurant because the profit margin for this restaurant very often would be just single digit. In case. So we have talked about the power structure here. So the so data we have is from about fourteen cities uh, across the state. So for example, San Francisco was the first city to implement that that fee cap. So the question we are trying to answer is, does this regulation actually work? So what happened to the platform? How the platform is reacting to that kind of regulation? So the impact on independent restaurant and eventually who bear the cost? You know, if we try to relocate the revenue they have generated from the process, so who actually eventually have to bear the cost because of the reduction in commission? So here's to give you a quick review of the answers. So the regulation actually did not work in well in this case. You will look at uh, some of the results here. So platform actually shift to promote restaurants from nearby city, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Like for example, for restaurant located in the city of Boston, for example, at Harvard Business School, you know the platform can only charge fifteen percent. So what they can do is can promote restaurants just across the river. In Cambridge, in this case, so that sort of makes sense because they can make you know, actually full commission from the unregulated city in this case, and also the problem changed their priority as well. They try to promote chain restaurant more than independent because you know chain restaurant are paying the original fee, and they have survey you know commitment as well. So they try to serve these restaurant uh, on top of uh, independent restaurant. We also see a platform shift some of the cost to consumer, either by increasing the delivery fee customer have to pay. So this is not part of you know, the commission uh, fee a restaurant will be paying. And some of the city add also add a, a what you call the city fee, a $2 city fee for customer who are located in San Francisco and you place an order from a restaurant located in San Francisco. So we heard there were changes in the, in the platform charging for advertising uh, uh, and uh, being listed in the in the app primarily to, to just get money and, and they could just lower the commission but they charge uh, like for the for the yeah they, they could they could yeah so I, I wish I could kind of throw into that uh so but we don't have that da data in that when you add it but it's really interesting to see how they actually tweak some of the, the parameter uh, as well. Yeah, so Chinese restaurant turned out to be the biggest winner because you know restaurants get to promote this restaurant. Uh, Platform get to actually promote this restaurant more. Yeah. All right, so let me give you some overview of the, how the platform is changing their strategy. So restaurants become more likely, uh, 
platform become more likely to promote restaurants from nearby city. So we see a 3.5 changes. So restaurants from nearby city, unregulated city are 3.5 percent more likely to actually be promoted in the four coast city with regulation. We see independent restaurants get demoted by about 1.2 percent of the time as well. Okay, let's look at the delivery fee. We see the increase in delivery fee by about 40 cents per order. And customer is back to wait a little bit longer because you know, you know, uh, the platform might be promoting restaurant from nearby city, which you know the distance can be a little bit longer. Uh, so here it's not actually we did not include the, the city for it, uh, in this case. Yeah. So let's look at the impact on the, the sales. I can I think I can simply skip this slide because the model is kind of uh, uh, straightforward. So let's look at the financial impact. So after the regulation, we see that so so here you, you look at that. So the the baseline is is restaurant from unregulated city, unregulated city. So the cap policy you can interpret is as the impact on uh, chain restaurant because we add uh, the dummy variable for the interaction term for independent. So this is the impact on chain restaurant. We see that all, across all columns in the row is positive. So chain restaurant actually benefit from that regulation. In the very restaurant for pickup visit, direct pickup visit, this is the customer actually go place an order directly from the restaurant. We see so if we put these terms together, it's like a zero, zero in case. But the net platform cell, the independent net uh, platform cell is decreasing. By about two percent, you will subtract this number from from this one. So the net platform sale actually decreased. So this is actually the net sale. Like we take the platform revenue and subtract the commission they are currently paying. We still see a, a net decrease in in revenue generated from the platform. Okay. So we look at the the last column is about the net profit for the for the restaurant overall. Uh, we see that for independent restaurant is sort of neutral it's actually revenue neutral in this case but uh chain restaurant yeah about 1.2 percent increase all right so this is a quick summary of uh, the results and i don't think i have to repeat them so i'll be stopping here and, and see whether any question yeah well i think these are really interesting uh, uh, results uh, one, I have a suggestion. I don't know if you can look at this with your data, mm. but when you were describing like the effects of independent, I mean, independent restaurants, one thing that uh, was striking me is that you also have uh, entry that's enabled by these uh, platforms that you could call uh, independent restaurants. So mm -hmm. you could, uh, and there's these platforms have helped like these uh, ideas of virtual restaurants. Mm -hmm. If like you're a chef, you could just open your restaurant and mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to. Uh, to, to have like a traditional restaurant and focus on delivery only. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if maybe one part that you could look at is if, if, if this, this idea of like new entrants uh, in mm -hmm. the platform. Yeah, and yeah I think interesting. That would connect with your example of the cloud, which I think is yeah. really interesting. Oh. Because with the cloud, I think what you see is a similar story, like in the sense that you can mm -hmm. have like now new mm -hmm. players. Yeah, start up, right? That start up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think maybe that's a way of like a, a little bit more nuance in the independent uh, mm -hmm. restaurants. So it's like really hurting the existing incumbent independent mm -hmm. restaurants, but it might be opening uh, opportunities for others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So good. yeah, you're referring to a very interesting phenomenon is like the, the ghost kitchen. Yeah. So yeah, 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 only yeah, have yeah, a, exactly. a kitchen, no dining place, no server, etc. Yes, yeah, I think that's very something that's very interesting to look at. Yeah. Yeah. We we can we can chat about that. Yeah, I mean, there's been a ton of speculation about this. Uh, uh, you know, like they, they, they can locate in different places then. They don't have. Yeah, to be, they, they don't have to buy a very, ex, you know, yeah. expensive, realistic, in, 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 in downtown area. Yeah. I have a case on that if you're, if you're interested. So I'm happy to yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, that was really wonderful. Yes, thanks wonderful. a lot. Thank yes, thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you. Thank you.